All right, SSL Family Dad with Simple Sustainable Living, and today we're insulating this basement. All right, so for those of you guys who've been following along, we have uh, we had some moisture issues down here in the basement. We tore the carpet out, tore the wood paneling off the walls, uh, uh, got this place all cleared out with uh, as much as we could. We left our furniture down here. And uh, I've taken that dry lock extreme and I've sealed up all the walls, all the block here, all the poured concrete floors. Um, I've taken spray foam and put it all in here in all these different places. Uh, any cracks and crevices and anything else that, uh, that, that any gaps anywhere that I could find where moisture or little critters could get in and uh, I've sealed this place up. This place is we could float away if they were a flood right would be like Noah right? <laughs> right they would just this place would just turn into a boat we just the whole basement would float out of here it should be sealed up good so um, I put two coats of the dry lock extreme on everything should be good to go uh, and we shouldn't have any moisture coming in now one thing I was a little worried about was was a little bit of condensation so the walls do stay a little bit cooler than the the inside air here obviously we've got you know 55 degree soil uh, outside of the walls here in the winter time and sometimes colder than that through the top levels here and so I wanted to get a little bit of insulation so what I'm going to do is I've got this half inch uh, foam board insulation that I'm going to put in here. Um, this stuff is an R3 value, so it's not a huge, you know, I'm not, it's not a huge insulation value, but these are about $11 a sheet. I would have liked to go with a, with a one inch or a two inch, to be honest with you, but um, you're looking at $20, $30 for a four by eight sheet of that stuff, and the cost just, it gets overwhelming for even a small area. So uh, I'm just going to stick with the half inch stuff here. Um, I want to make sure it's secured into these these uh, these stud cavities really well, and so I'm going to use a couple different types of adhesive, as well as getting them friction fit between the studs as best as possible. Also, so I'm going to take you through here and uh, the whole process and, and show you what we're doing and how how it turns out. So let's go ahead and dig in and get started. All right, we, we're just about done here. Everything's, everything's in place. I have still a little bit of spray foam to do. Um, I really like that, that spray foam. Uh, it, looks, it looks pretty ugly, but um, it really does a good job of filling in those gaps and stuff. So it'll provide a little extra insulation and kind of seal things up. But uh, I used three different ways or three different methods to attach the, uh, the insulation to the wall. So um, the first method here 
is this uh, this wall here had a wide enough gap behind it. All these walls are just a little bit off the concrete, um, which is the right way to do it. You don't want this untreated wood right against the concrete because it would have rotted. Um, so there's a little bit of a gap there. This one here did have a half inch gap behind it. And so I was able to take a full sheet and slide it right in and get it behind there. Um, there was still a little bit of wiggle in it. And so I came around at the end here with these just little scraps of plywood that I had and, and a brad nailer. And I just pressed this board in and just nailed it to the stud. So I did that anywhere that there was any, any play in it. Just a little bit here. Um, and so I also did it on these little supports here in places just to keep it flush against the wall. Uh, I, I wanted to, to try to prevent any gap from you know big gaps behind there of air because I don't want any moisture build to occur. So I wanted it to, to stay as flat against the wall as possible. Um, so then in these areas here, there was not enough gap behind the wall. I used that foam board adhesive that worked really well. Um, that stuff is made for these foam boards. It's sold right at Home Depot along with this stuff. And you can see like this stuff is, is in there. Um, I use that on these these big sections. I have to build a wall here that will go on top of this this insulation because this this didn't have a wall on it this side. Uh, so this just a full four by eight sheet went here. Um, I did that crisscross on it and, and around the edges um, and press this up there and it and it holds it. I mean you hold it for a few seconds and it's done. And uh, that stuff worked really well. Had a really strong smell to it, but it worked worked really well. I also used that uh, like contact cement it was that super adhesive that spray adhesive um, that stuff works pretty good uh, i use that um, on a lot of these ones up here i think and some of these other smaller pieces that kind of fit in at the top uh, it works pretty good it dries really quickly and so you have to spray it and, and put your board in place as quickly as you can otherwise you got to reapply it so and then over here i you'll see more of these these wood pieces over here I really just used a friction fit so similar to the first method um, I cut these pieces of foam board really tight to the edges and I just friction pushed it in there uh, so that it holds it really tight um, and you can see I mean this stuff is is in there pretty well uh, I, I put a few little uh, little supports in there just to push it against the wall again um, in a few different areas and that worked really well so then I went around at the end and I used the, the spray foam to fill in all the gaps around uh, the crooked stuff and you know where my cuts didn't line up. I still have, I'm gonna grab another can of that spray foam and uh, just go and probably go around the edges of all of these uh, and all the, the corners and stuff like that. I filled all the big stuff in, but there's still some little gaps. There's also a, ta a tape that you can get to tape these seams together also. And um, that's fine too. I might even just grab some of that to do, to do these seams, but it's not that important, I don't think. Uh, I think this, what we have done here, will keep this sealed up and uh, provide a little bit of extra insulation uh, value to the basement here. So this insulation, it doesn't really have a front and a back as far as I can tell. Uh, you know, I just put the, the writing out just so you could see what it is and it tells you what it is in case someone else, you know, 10 years down the road takes this apart and they'll see what kind of insulation value and stuff it has. But uh, this does have a film coating on it. And I left the, uh, the plastic coating on. It's on both sides. I left it on in most cases. Now, when I glued the uh, big pieces on there uh, against the wall, I did take this off because I was worried about that adhesive. On all the smaller pieces, I just glued right to the, the plastic sheeting uh, and, and glued it right to the wall. Uh, it seems to, to hold just fine. This stuff actually is attached to the foam pretty good. It's, it's actually kind of uh, hard to pull off. So I think that'll be fine. Um, I don't see any reason why to tear, why to tear it off. Um, you know, if as long as the they're they're fit in there tightly, it just provides an extra vapor barrier. So uh, I left all the plastic on uh, in most of the cases there on that. So a little bit of a quicker video on this step. I'm gonna I'm ready to move on to the electrical. Um, I can't wait to get that done. Uh, I've got some, uh, some some different kind of techniques and stuff with that to to do that. So if you want to check that video out, it'll be coming out next in the series. Uh, if you haven't uh, followed along, you know, there's uh, two videos before this as well that kind of uh, give you an intro to what's going on down here and then uh, what I did to kind of tear things apart uh, as well as get everything prepped with the dry lock and sealing off the concrete. So, um, but uh, I think this, this is going to provide a, a pretty good little barrier for us down here. A little bit of insulation, a little bit of temperature variance 
uh, from the outside to the inside, uh, as well as keeping that condensation down. So hopefully this will work well for us. We've sealed this place up as best as I can, and I'm just about ready to get the drywall on. So uh, if you guys uh, want to follow along, hit the, hit the uh, subscribe button and hit the bell next to it so that you get uh, alerts and notifications when we post new videos. Love to have you guys tag along. As always, questions and comments uh, down below. I, I have no problem if you guys have done this kind of thing before and you do it differently or you have other ideas, put them down below so, so that everyone can read those and, uh, and, and check it out and, and get everybody's opinion together and then make their own decisions. So um, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.